Hi, this is Kenny Kwan, a Nikon Creators official partner, and today I'm going to show you how to shoot an end roll with analog on the Z8, which also applies to Nikon cameras with end roll capabilities like the Z9 and many others. And for anyone that is wondering what end log is, it's a way of capturing video that gives you a massive amount of control over your footage, how it looks, when it's editing. And it's originally shot flat, and because the data is largely untouched, the footage has way more original information in it that gives you much more flexibility when it comes to pushing your colors, tones, exposures, and etc. So let's get into how to do this step by step. And because recording video in analog through NRAW and ProRes RAW tends to have more data written per second than the default H.264 and H.265 formats, you're going to need a card with a fast sustain write speed which is technically the write speed that was sustained over a period of time without dropping. I would recommend the Procreate Cobalt and Nikon's website has a list of approved cards. I will link this as well as a chart with a full breakdown of the write speed of every single spec that you're going to need for every codec in the description below so that you can assess which ones that you will need. So now that you got the right gear, let's move on to the settings and the best practice tips. First, hit the menu button on the lower right of your camera. On the right, find the video recording menu Go to destination and select the correct memory card that you want the video to record into. Next, go to video file type. The first four are the ones that you can record in N-Log. If you look to the right of the options, you'll notice that it says SDR, which stands for Standard Dynamic Range, which is the default tone mode. So we want to change this. Press right on the direction pad and select N-Log. Because I prefer to shoot these high resolution formats in that tone, I'm going to change all four of these file types to N-Log so that my camera remembers this for future shoots. Next, go to video quality and raw and make sure it's set at high quality. And lastly, here are two best practice tips that you can use to successfully film in analog. The general rule of thumb is to expose your scene about 1.5 times extra stops than normal so that your footage has extra information in the shadows of your visual, but it's not too bright that you cannot recover the highlights in post-production. Generally speaking, this is something that is recommended for other cameras by other manufacturers as well. It is known as ETTR, which stands for Exposed to the Right. This would be right of the correct exposure of the histogram. So I'm going to show you how to toggle this onto the features and measure this accurately. So go back to video, go to G16 Brightness Information Display and make sure HIST, which stands for Histogram, is selected. And if you prefer to use Waveform, you can select Waveform Monitor or Waveform Monitor Large. If you're not familiar with how to read these, I will explain shortly. It's really easy. Go to G18 Custom Monitor Display and pick any of these displays. I'm going to select Display 1 and press right on the direction pad. Hit the checkbox for brightness information and anything else that you want on the screen. Now, if you toggle on video mode, the histogram is going to show up. Take a look at a clip of this lens as an example to demonstrate how to read your exposure levels. As I was explaining before, when it comes to shooting and nailing roughly 1.5 stops of exposure histogram, aim to fiddle with your shutter speed, aperture, and ISO so that the spikes are on the highlights, which is on the right side. As long as the spikes do not touch the red edge, you will not be overexposed. And this is the same principle for reading waveform monitor and waveform monitor large. Keep the highlights on the upper bar, but don't let it touch the top. Any of these exposure meters are valid ways to make sure that your footage is properly exposed, so feel free to try them out and see what works best with your style of shooting. So you can toggle on something called View Assist, and it's designed to help you visualize what's on your camera's monitor and give you a good idea of what the analog footage is going to look like when the curves and colors are added in post. And just to be clear, View Assist applies only to your camera's monitor not the actual file that's going to be recorded in analog that you're going to be editing in post. To find this, go to the menu and look for the pencil icon on the left, select G video, and it's located under G12 view assist. Toggle that on and you are good to go. Just for your information, this only applies to internal camera recording. So if you're recording onto an external monitor connected through an HDMI, you're going to need to load Nikon's LUTs manually into monitor. Nikon's downloadable LUTs for external monitors and editing can be found on the Nikon's website or linked in the description below. So I hope these tips are helpful when it comes to shooting analog and, and, and raw, and I cannot wait to see what y'all create out there. And if you want to see the best workflow for editing and raw with analog footage, tap on this video right here and have a great day. Peace.